Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer with For and From St Catherine's. This week we're looking at the story of Joseph under the overall title of Abraham and Family. Joseph, if you remember, was uh, upset his brothers by suggesting to them that one day they would bow down to him. And they were all older than him, quite a lot older than him, and they didn't like that idea. So they decided to kill him. And then they changed their mind. They decided to sell him. He was sold into slavery in Egypt and lived for many years in slavery stroke prison in Egypt. In fact, somewhere around about 12, 13 years he spent either as a slave or in prison. But then things turned around. He ends up as prime minister of Egypt, he oversees the gathering of all the bonus crops for the seven good years, and then come the seven bad years, widespread famine across the area, and sooner or later, Joseph's brothers decide they've got to go to Egypt. That's the only place that has food, so they're going to have to buy some from Egypt. So we're now ooh, well over 20 years, well over 20 years after they last saw their 17 year old brother who's now nearly 40 and got kids. And well, how does that go? How does that go for Joseph? When Joseph looks up one day and sees his murderous older brothers standing in queue wanting to see him. I wonder if you've ever had an experience similar to that. I mean, probably not that extreme, but a time when somebody had seriously upset you, seriously wronged you, and then you find yourself face to face with them. Whether or not that's happened, I'm sure you can imagine. How would you react? What would you do? What would be your approach if somebody who had seriously, seriously wronged you was standing right in front of you and they didn't know it was you? That's the very position Joseph finds himself in and we're going to discover over the course of this week what he did, how he handled it. Did he handle it well? Did he handle it badly? Well, you can judge that yourself. Join me for that. Join me for our opening prayer. And so too, today's part of the reading, it's part of the story, which is Genesis chapter 42, the first part of that chapter. When Jacob, Jacob being Joseph's elderly father, when Jacob learned that there was grain in Egypt, he said to his sons, why do you just keep looking at each other? He continued, I've heard that there's grain in Egypt. Go down there, buy some for us, so we may live and not die. Then ten of Joseph's brothers went down to buy grain from Egypt. But Jacob didn't send Benjamin, Joseph's brother, from his mother, his full brother. Uh, he didn't send jo uh, Benjamin with the others because he was afraid that harm might come to him. So Israel's sons were among those who went to buy grain for there was famine in the land of Canaan. Now Joseph was governor of the land and the person who sold grain to all its people. So when Joseph's brothers arrived they bowed down to him with their faces to the ground and as soon as Joseph saw his brothers he recognized them but he pretended to be a stranger and spoke harshly to them where do you come from he asked oh, from the land of Canaan they replied to buy food although Joseph recognized his brothers they didn't recognize him then he remembered his dreams about them and said, You're spies. You've come to see where our land is unprotected. No, my lord, they answered. Your servants have come to buy food. We're all sons of one man. Your servants are honest men, not spies. No, he said to them. You have come to see where our land is unprotected. But they replied, Your servants were... Twelve brothers, sons of one man, who lives in the land of Canaan. The youngest is now with our father, and one is no more. Joseph said to them, It is just as I've told you, you're spies. This is how you will be tested. As surely as Pharaoh lives, you will not leave this place until your youngest brother comes here. Send one of your number to get your brother. The rest of you will be kept in prison so that your words may be tested to see if you are telling the truth. If you're not, 
that as surely as Pharaoh lives, you are spies. And he put them all in custody for three days. On the third day, Joseph said to them, do this and you will live, for I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers stay here in prison, while the rest of you go and take grain back to your starving households. But you must bring your youngest brother to me so that your words may be verified and that you may not die. This they proceeded to do. They said to one another, surely we're being punished because of our brother. We saw how distressed he was when he pleaded with us for his life, but we wouldn't listen. That's why this distress has come on us. Reuben replied, didn't I tell you not to sin against the boy? But you wouldn't listen, and now we must give account for his blood. <laughs> they didn't realise that Joseph could understand them, since he was using an interpreter. He turned away from them and began to weep, but then came back and spoke to them again. And he had Simeon taken from them and bound before their eyes. Joseph gave orders to fill their bags with grain and to put each man's silver back in his sack and to give them provisions for their journey. After this was done, they loaded their grain onto their donkeys and left. At the place where they stopped for the night, one of them opened his sack to get feed for his donkey. And when he saw the silver in its mouth of the sack, he said, my silver has been returned, he said to his brothers. Here it is in my sack. And their hearts sank, and they turned to each other, trembling, and said, What is this that God has done to us? There really isn't another story in the Bible which is told in such, such beautiful detail than the story of Joseph. Not even the story of Jesus is told in quite this level of detail with the emotional narrative and the, and the dialogue between different characters. Uh, it really is a fabulously rich story. And the reason we have this story told in such detail is this was the explanation of how the Jews had, or the Israelites had ended up in Egypt. They were in Egypt for hundreds of years. So this story was told again from down through the families. Every child grew up with this story because this story explained what they were doing in Egypt. And when they left Egypt, <clears throat> they committed it to paper and held on to it. Anyway, remember, as we understand the story, that we're not just talking about individuals. We're talking about nations. Uh, Jacob was in effect a king. His sons were in effect princes and they arrived in Egypt not just to feed themselves and their families. They arrived in Egypt to seek a, a food deal for their entire community, which would have run to thousands of people. And that's why they end up in front of Joseph, because Joseph wasn't running a sort of dodgy little food stall around the, in the back streets of Cairo. Uh, he was he was the prime minister. So when these foreign princes arrive to to seek to to buy food for their nation, they get taken to Joseph. And that's where this remarkable story happens. The other thing to remember is Joseph now has become an Egyptian. And we know how, what Egyptians look like. The Egyptians wore wigs. The Egyptians shaved, whereas the, the Canaanites didn't. The Canaanites had full beards and long hair. The Egyptians had short hair and, and, and shaved faces and fancy wigs and, and lots of makeup. The, the Canaanites didn't wear makeup. So jo Joseph is seeing his brothers dressed in you know the same style that they always have been easy for him to recognize them but they're not recognizing him at all that if he had appeared at the age of 17 that's now gone you know, they're seeing an Egyptian dressed as an Egyptian speaking in Egyptian through an interpreter and there is the the one of the glorious details of this that Joseph decides well what's he going to do he's got no warning of this there they are in front flip a neck that's my brother's what am I going to do with them? Well, he decides to toy with them, rather like a cat toys with a mouse. What is bought it? Our, our kitten just out there a few weeks ago caught a pigeon and played with it for hours. 
Joseph decides to do that. He's not made his mind up what to do with them. He wants to provide food for his family, but he doesn't want to let his brothers off with what they've done. So he takes his line. Yes, spies. Yes, spies. Let's see where this leads. He puts him in prison for a few days and I suspect kept an eye on them. And that's a remarkable thing. He's standing there because he's dealing with them through an interpreter. He's standing there listening to them argue amongst themselves about him. They are arguing amongst themselves about what they did to Joseph. And there is Joseph himself standing there thinking, <laughs> can't believe this. And all the while thinking, what do I do? What do I do with them? How do I handle this situation? Do I need to be hard on them? Do I need to be gentle on them? He's not sure. So what do we learn from this? Well, I don't know what we learn from this because we're just at the beginning of a longer story. But maybe what we learn from Jake, from Joseph is, is sometimes you just have to take time. Sometimes you just have to say, OK, let's let's put this on hold and see how it goes. Let's not be instinctive, not just get a sword out and plunge it through them straight there and then. He puts him in prison. He buys himself some time. He decides to get them to bring his brother Benjamin back. Gives himself some time. When we find ourselves in tricky positions, when we find ourselves in positions when our emotions are very likely just to wash us away on a wave of, of passion, giving ourselves some time, some time to think, some time to work it out, some time to pray, surely that's a good plan. Thank you, Joseph. After Joseph had put his brothers in prison for three days, he brings them out again and talks to them. And he said, this is what we're going to do. For I fear God. I too fear God. Joseph's plan, his change of plan, his change of plan from putting them all in prison and sending one of them back to holding one in prison, and sending all the others back, came through his relationship with God, came through prayer. By taking time to think and to pray, Joseph comes up with an alternative plan, a more compassionate plan, a more forgiving plan than his initial one. So taking time out to pray is a really good thing to do. Whenever we find ourselves in a situation, especially a situation where our passions are in danger of carrying us away to extreme behaviour, taking time out to pray is going to help us to tune into a better plan. If we, like Joseph, fear God, respect God, join me in prayer, in the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. That just about brings us to the end of our daily prayer for today. And tomorrow we have another chapter in this amazing story. Tomorrow, the, the brothers, so there were 10, so there's nine now. The, the brothers get back to their dad and explain what happened and uh, deliver the message. And they're all pretty confused. <laughs> Joseph did not let them off lightly. He sent them back with a lot of things to worry about. Interesting. Was that kind of him? Not kind of him? I don't know. More of this story to tell. For the moment, join me for the prayer of grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all forevermore. Amen.